Located on an island some 350 kilometers from Mombasa, Lamu is the oldest Swahili settlement in East Africa. Its history dates back some 700 years, with much of its social fabric and culture still intact today and is now a UN heritage site. Almost 100 meters from the town's seafront is an imposing structure overlooking the town square. This is Lamu Fort, part of the Lamu Museum, and for the next few weeks is home to some of the most treasured Chinese artifacts found on the island. The fortress was built by the locals in 1821 as a base for the town's rulers. It was later used as a prison by the British colonial administration before its conversion into a museum after Kenya got its independence. The Lamu Museum itself is located on the waterfront. Uh, in between uh, two of the town's probably most important buildings, the Rosa Mosque and the Catholic Church. When renovations began at Lama Museum in November 2021, a decision was made to bring all of its treasures here at the Lama Fort for storage. Among those treasures were Chinese artifacts dating back centuries. Muhammad Ali, the museum's collection manager, has agreed to show us some of the Chinese porcelain in the museum's collection, some of it kept under lock and key in the museum's storage room. As you can see here, we have uh, porcelains, uh, plates, we have cylinder bowls, we have porcelain pots and uh, small saucers. Mohamed, can you just explain to us what we're looking at here and some of the designs? Well, uh, in describing uh, Chinese uh, unique patterns, which highlight, mostly highlights, it highlights uh, coin patterns, which is here at the center here, uh, as well as the scroll patterns. Then there is uh, the comb pattern. All these are comb patterns. This is some of the unique uh, Chinese uh, designs. And then the other patterns which appears on the, on the surface is the, the landscape. The designs on the porcelain are also a good indicator of the time period they were produced. Some, dating back centuries, are still in very good condition compared to porcelain from other regions. Chinese porcelain, of course, has always been uh, high quality uh, because of its method of uh, production. The artifact itself is uh, molded, decorated, uh, so you have a very high quality porcelain uh, that does not lose its last over a period of time. Over time, the porcelains were adopted by the locals for different uses. After burial, on top of the grave, water is poured uh, to, to that grave, and these were special for, for that purpose. Others became a status symbol used for decorative purposes in the homes of the wealthy. So how old would you say this is? Uh, yeah, probably it can go back to the 8th century. That would put them among some of the oldest Chinese artifacts that made their way to East Africa. We have a historical map of, of historical sites and monuments of Lamu region showing uh, Chinese people where they uh, resided. Using ancient trade routes established by Chinese navigators and merchants, Chinese ships visited new regions for trade and to learn about the different cultures. We were able to receive lots of uh, silk and porcelain from China in exchange of infected goods from the east coast of Africa. This is the, what, it, what was then known as the silk trade route. Yes, just trying to show you some of the few Swahili uh, cities where the Chinese uh, I mean, mingled with the local people. Right. Like for instance, Manda in Manda Island, uh, Shanga and Seo in Pati Island. Inside the gallery, Muhammad shows me the link between the island and the Ming dynasty established during Zengi's voyage. If you happen to have this kind of porcelain, it, it links back to uh, that period of the Ming dynasty. The ancient maritime Silk Road had a huge influence on local culture for centuries. Interactions between the Swahili people and the Chinese through an exchange in goods, language and culture is evident in some traditions that have withstood the test of time. Today, cultural relations between China and Africa have strengthened ties between both sides. This has meant huge strides made in trade, education, technology and investment through people-to-people -people exchanges. 
These cultural engagements have taken place in various fields, including music, drama, theatre and poetry, bringing the two peoples close together. Bobat Nagela, CGTN, Lamu, Kenya.